Hey there. Welcome back to Gas Under Pressure. We're working on the old, uh, the Aero Gas, uh, gosh, was it 126, I think. Shoot, I can't hardly see. But anyway, it's the, uh, the old cabin stove. And uh, I think I've kind of saved you guys a little bit of uh, trouble and uh, boredom from watching me unscrew a lot of frozen screws and, uh, and whatnot because I figured, eh, you see the person unscrew a screw, who needs to see all that mess? So I did some of that stuff off camera just to, so you don't have to give me any, well, <laughs> so you don't have to watch me struggle with it. But honestly, it was really pretty simple. Uh, these, the top for this is held on with uh, some little spring clips like this and then just a simple screw. So even though this thing was, is as old as dirt and very rusty, everything came apart super duper easy. So that was really good. Um, you might see that this grate here is really quite black. And uh, what this has gone through is that this has gone through treatment with a, uh, in my electrolytic cell here that to, to de-rust it. So I did all the electrolytic rust removal on that. It looks pretty good. And then I've, uh, coated it with OSFO and OSFO is um, what is this phosphoric acid that's the active ingredient that's in here and phosphoric acid when you combine that with any kind of uh, rust on iron it converts it into uh, iron phosphate which is black and it is also a rust preventative in itself and it makes it nice for painting so i'm going to paint this with some high temperature paint i know it's going to burn off but the areas that won't burn off will be protected and the areas that do burn off are well they're whatever right so uh so that is why this looks like this the little bit of white residue is from the uh is from that osfo and that's normal they say that uh, you'll see that and that's how you know that it's actually fully cured and dried i have one part of this grate here which has got a crack in it right there so that may need to be brazed back together but we're going to set this down over here right now i have another one which is sitting in the electrolytic cell will fly you over there so you can see that it's uh not very pretty but it's not doing much at the moment you can see there's just a bare little bit of uh, bubbles coming off of it and uh so this one is gonna be uh, be ready pretty soon to uh be it taken care of so uh, i'll do the same thing with that i'll i'll brush it off and then um and then just uh treat it with the OSFO and then we'll paint it and it'll be good to go. Uh, I use for my sacrificial anodes, I use pieces of metal cut from old fuel cans. So uh, the wide surface area gives you very good, uh, it's the surface area that works more so than anything else. So people say use rebar. This is what I've used in the past. Rebar has a very small surface area. This has got big wide surface area and it comes free with all the fuel cans that you use. So uh, I just cut them up and I use them as the sacrificial anodes. They're thin, they don't last real long, but you know what, if I throw a few of them away, it don't matter because you know I've already bought it and it's pretty much free as it is. So uh, that is the story on that. Um, Right, so what I want to do with this is get the get the top off and get this burner out and um so the deal with the burner uh you may have remember them the front it had a uh, it had a a valve and that's for this burner here and this is the uh, the valve that was in there uh it's really more of an eccentric and uh that pops up a little a little uh another a, a valve i guess actually is what it is uh, it moves it up and down that's frozen inside here so i basically worked on this and and got it to come out so because this is was was would be tying the top of this to the burner and the idea here is get these burners into the electrolytic bath so they can start de-rusting so that little valve will come loose these burners are supposed to come loose too i believe and uh, and then we can get everything cleaned up with that so that is kind of where we're at this is probably going to be a relatively short little video here because i just kind of wanted to show you some progress what we're making because the idea for this is to have it in good enough shape that i can take it along to the lone star coleman collectors gathering in in uh, in corsicana coming up this october so
Really all I have to do right now, I've taken all these other screws off around the periphery. I've loosened these two. These go right into the, 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 into the casting and they actually came loose without too much trouble. So I'm going to just continue to unloosen this, which will then have this drop down. Um, I probably actually you know what I should have done. I should have removed the generator first because otherwise it's just leaning on the generator. So let me put this back in here so it's not putting too much stress on that. That's good. And we'll just remove the generator. So uh, we'll go back to our trusty wrenches here, get this fuel line off so that way we don't mess anything up. I think it's probably a half inch maybe, not too big. Seven sixteenths, anyone? Yeah, I think so, yep. So we're gonna loosen this. Get it off. And it's of course still very hot here in Texas. I've got my swamp cooler going, but you wouldn't know it. Uh, let's see, so the next step is to unscrew that screw there, which of course is in the dark. But since I've taken this off before, she comes out nice and easy this time, so no real struggles. I can't wait to see this thing all painted up and finished. It's gonna look so nice. I'm gonna print the, pin, print paint this tank silver also, so that will look good. Yeah, this whole generator assembly comes out so easy and it's so easy to maintain that, uh, yeah, we won't have any problem running just regular. Well, I mean, you can run Coleman fuel in it, but it's so easy to clean. There's no spring to worry about getting carbon up. You just hit it with a big brush and off you go. Okay, so that's clear out of the way. And uh, this, by the way, is still holding pressure for about a week now. So no problems at all to worry about. You, you see I've put my handy gas plant on here because I can just use my air compressor and fill it right up instead of getting the, the big exercise with this huge pump. So it's my little cheater there. Um, so let's see. So next up here, we're going to go ahead and unloosen this so the, the burner will drop out. Set that down there. Save our little screw. Make sure I get the generator nut and screw together. And then this whole top comes right off. So um, the reason I wanted to do this is because I want to throw this whole thing into an electrolysis tank because it just needs to be de-rusted everywhere. It's really in pretty good shape. Um, you can see there's still some nice shiny original paint you can see underneath there. It was originally black, obviously. But um, what I'm going to have to do is, oh, hey, this is great. So I was very concerned about this very cool Aerogas plate. And it's, you can see it's got rivets on it. Well, they're actually not rivets. They're like uh, little brads. Um, I'm not sure if I can, uh, probably, yeah, we just do this. But you can see it's just two little tabs that are folded over here and here. So I can, uh, I can unfold those and then be able to put them right back. So uh, I won't have to do any drilling. So that is awesome. The main reason I want to take it off is that uh, I don't want to have this brass in the electrolytic bath. I don't, uh, I'm not exactly sure what would happen to it, and I really don't want to find out. But I don't mind putting this whole steel thing in there as it is. But I may need to get a bigger container to be able to put that in. So that's this piece. Just set that aside. This little brace, which just sits on there, same thing. We'll clean that up, get it all squared away. That will probably fit into my, almost fit in my electrolytic cell as it is. And then here we have the, uh, the burner assembly. And, uh, and this is the part of the, uh, the little valve that's inside there that is, uh, that is all froze up. So these, what I've seen, these are actually 
they, they press on there and they look like they come off. I'm not gonna try to struggle and try to break them free, but um, I heard some, huh, is that valve trying to move? A little bit. We may spray some uh, PB Blaster up in there just to kind of see if it'll clear it out. But um, so what I'm going to do now is take off the pieces that are non-steel. So uh, this little piece will have to come out and we'll get uh, these off here. So uh, to clear ourselves off a little room, I'm going to set this burner down like this. And then we're going to just move this aside for now. Make this little mount here. And this whole thing will also end up going into the electrolytic bath here eventually. Okay. Whew. All right. So um, to make my life a little easier, I'm going to go ahead and brush out some of these screws so uh, they'll come off a little better although they look they look pretty corroded they may end up just being uh, replaced I'll use the stainless on this because the brass is coming off on the steel there we go that's looking pretty good so let's see if we have any any luck i don't think our uh this is good there. I think these square nuts are jammed up against the uh, the casting to make it a, you don't need to use a wrench to install. So we'll see if these come loose. Magically they do, <laughs> which I can't believe my good fortune here, but not gonna complain about it. I think I do need a, a wrench of this just to save my fingers. So we'll get this end off here, and we'll 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 get a, a good look at the um, at the uh, the end of the valve and see what it is we have to do with the valve. Kind of wishing I had my power screwdriver to make this a little quicker, but it's coming along all right, not too bad. Okay, one down. See if we're lucky on the second one. It looks a lot more corroded. Yeah, there we go. Outstanding. Okay. Let's just push this nut up against here and then have the casting do the work for me. Well, a little bit. Okay, so this is uh, coming along pretty well. You know, I'm always surprised with the uh, Coleman stuff that even though a lot of this stuff has sat unused for years is that how rarely you have anything that is completely frozen up and you have to cut screws or other resort to other destructive methods to disassemble things so so there you go um all right so there's that we've got a a gasket on the end here which is going to have to come off um pretty sure it's going to get destroyed in the process so i'll have to have a uh, a new uh, high temp gasket on that this will uh, also get to go into the electrolytic bath and get de-rusted and cleaned up and repainted but uh, you know we'll take a look at it what it looks like here and so we can kind of see the before and after on this once we get that done um next step is to get uh, this out of here and it's seven sixteenths but it's got a bunch of stuff on it so it's not 
There we go. Again, it's a brass into cast iron and it just spins right out after being in there for ever. So that's not too big of a deal. Fair bit of little, a uh, little bit of buildup in there just because this is a low point. So this is the drain. So when you flood the stove, uh, that's the low point here of the of the manifold and you unscrew the little it's a there's a little needle screw in here and so when you unscrew that you actually don't have to unscrew the entire way so it's got this little needle point which seals and this has got a hole drilled into it so this gets screwed in so the hole is pointing down so that way whenever you want to drain it you just open it and it drains right out through the nut pretty cool so um, that is the uh, that is the deal here. <laughs> as much as I hate to have to pop off this uh, this seal here, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So um, yeah, you may wish to avert your eyes. <laughs> well, we'll see if it comes off in one piece. I don't think we'll be that lucky, but we'll we'll see if it does. Uh, Oh yeah, she's not gonna come off. Well, I don't know. Huh. Well, we might be pretty lucky. There we go. It's actually a steel plate. That's the gasket that's still on there. So it is, uh, it is trash and we'll just cut it open because it's all kinds of fuel and oil soaked in there and you can you can see the the loop for the uh, the eccentric in there and that that thing that moves that valve up and down or if, I, if I can get it to well it does seem to move so that part's good it just may not move all the way down let's try sticking the this back in there see how it uh, wants to go yeah it's kind of weird because it looks like it should open all the way but I guess it's really only a half a turn so I guess it was working the whole time so that's great um, very good so this I think about as far as we're gonna go for right now um, what we're gonna do is a lot of electrolytic de-rusting and getting this stuff cleaned up. Again, once this stuff is uh, is cleaned and de-rusted, it will get the, uh, the OSFO treatment, it'll get the high temperature black paint, which again, like I said, a lot of it's gonna burn off and then uh, some of it won't and the stuff that doesn't will protect it. The stuff that does, well, it won't be any, any worse than it is right now. But um, that's it for uh, for this episode. Kind of a quick one, but um, lots of progress. Everything's broken down. The next time that we should see all this stuff, uh, more than likely, well, we'll decide if we're going to show kind of some of the prep work, maybe, uh, depending on that. But uh, like I said, I'm not going to try to bore everyone with the, with the repetitive parts of this. But uh, there you go. So that's the whole deal. Um, until next time, keep them lit.